Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Detola, and I'd like to welcome you to this clinical presentation from Glidewell Laboratories. Today we have an interesting case on a young man who suffers from GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. And you can see what uh, has happened to his anterior teeth as a result of him uh, vomiting uh, about five times a day on average in the gastric acids with their low pH in the range of two. Uh, going over those teeth again. You can see the anterior teeth are completely worn down. The posterior teeth uh, have become almost featureless in terms of occlusal anatomy, and you can see how the enamel's been worn away there. He's uh, under the care of a medical doctor who's helping him to control the situation. Uh, but we know that uh, even though the stomach acids will attack any restorations we put in the mouth, that we're better off having the acid attack those restorations rather than what's left of his teeth. So this is going to be essentially a full arch case. We're going to leave one or two teeth unprepared in the back, the second molars, uh, for the time being. Because they're in pretty good shape and it's going to help us maintain vertical dimension. Not a lot of preparation to be done on the anterior teeth. Certainly no incisal reduction. And on a tooth like this where we still have some features, we can go ahead and use our reverse prep technique by starting with the gingival depth cut with the round burr. And once we've roughed prepped these teeth, we're just gonna try on the bio temps on the anterior teeth to see how they fit and then continue to make any reduction where necessary to get the bio temps to seat passively. You can either look at the bio temps model where they were constructed or have a suck down splint made if you find that to be more helpful. We've now prepared all the teeth on the maxillary arch except for the second molars, and we're trying in the posterior segments of the bio temps. And since they fit, we're going to go ahead and reline those with the acrylic now. Patient biting down on a couple cotton rolls. And while that is setting, we're going to go ahead and place the anterior units as well. I'm pushing these into place with my fingers, and as that material starts to um, thicken, we'll be able to remove some of the excess from around the margins and then pump these units up and down on the teeth to avoid any undercuts that we may have. Uh, I learned from one of my restorative mentors that it's not a good idea to impress on the same day you prepare uh, almost any anterior case, but certainly a large case like this. There's a nice look at the bio temps when we're all finished and trimmed. Again, we want to leave the gingival embrasures open whenever possible to promote healing of the gingival tissues and in order to make sure that it, we don't cause any recession from having gingival embrasures that are too closed. The anterior biotemps fell off several times um, while the patient was awaiting his next appointment. So we decided we probably did not have enough retention on the anterior teeth to help retain uh, the single unit CapTec crowns that were going to be in place. If they didn't stay in place uh, while they were splinted together, the chances of them staying in place as single unit crowns was definitely in doubt. So we decided to place post and cores on teeth number 7, 8, 9, and 10. This is a little bite registration on the adjacent teeth, which have not been anesthetized. Uh, so I'm just covering those up because the air was a little sensitive for him. And we're going to continue to remove gutta percha on teeth number 7, 8, 9, and 10. These teeth have been un endodontically treated about a year ago as a result uh, of his GERD condition as well. And we're going to take advantage of that by placing some titanium posts and some composite buildups so we can get some more mechanical retention to help hold these crowns. Uh, into place. Again, as I mentioned, when, when you see biotemps come off, when they're splinted, you know, four, five, six teeth together at the same time, you know you're getting more retention, uh, mechanical retention, than you will get with single units, even though they're only on with temporary cement at that point. So if biotemps are chronically coming off when splinted, uh, we know that we have a problem, and hence we're going to put some uh, post and cores in place, and we're going to gain some length at the incisal edge of the teeth, which we were planning on doing anyway, but now we're going to make our preps a little bit longer because that's the best way uh, to gain additional retention on these units. We don't want to have to rely on our cement, although in this case we'll be using 3MSP's Reliax Unisem, which is an incredibly strong resin cement, a self-etching resin cement, but still we don't want to have to rely that much on the cement. So we've cut the posts into place this time and they're at the proper length and now we're putting some of the Reliax Unisem that I mentioned we're going to cement the crowns with because this is such a low expansion cement in fact it's the lowest expansion cement that we have it's perfect for cementing posts into place many of the other popular crown and bridge cements have acceptable expansion rates for under crown and bridge 
but you place those same cements inside a root and it could cause a root fracture. We have the patient bite down before we cure this cement. It is a dual cure cement. And we want to make sure that the posts are in the right direction. It's possible on these maxillary anterior teeth to position the post too far to the lingual where it will interfere with the patient's bite and you'll have to cut most of the post off. So during the try-in and before you cure the cement, have the patient bite together and make sure that the posts are out enough to the facial so that they're not getting in the way of the lower anterior teeth when the patient bites together. You know, by the same token, you don't want to have them prepared so they're sticking way out and the teeth appear to be bucky when the crowns are in. But if you just barely have any clearance, you know, say a millimeter of clearance between the posts and the lower anterior teeth, you'll be fine. The Unisam has been cured, been light cured, and it's also chemically cured at this point, so we don't have to wait too long and we're ready to go ahead and etch the tooth. And we etch a little bit of the post at the same time for no other reason than just to make sure we got the entire portion, the coronal portion of the tooth. And because we're etching dent at this point, it stays in place for 10 seconds and then we rinse it off and we go ahead and remove the excess moisture. We still want to leave a little bit moist for the bonding agent that we're going to place here. This is Optibond from Kerr and we'll go ahead and paint this on everywhere including on the post and then light cure that into place. And then we will begin our composite buildup. This happens to be Luxacor. There are several anatomic forms available that you may want to use in a case like this that I do use sometimes where you fill the form up and put it over the post. In this case, I'm just going to freehand it, as you can see, and just kind of like soft serve ice cream, go around and add some layers to this. You want to put too much buildup rather than not enough. Cure it into place, and if you've used a nice high-strength, dense buildup material, it'll feel about the same as two structure as you cut on it. You can see some sparking coming here from the football diamond as I cut away part of the head of the titanium post, and that's you know part of what's going to happen when you're working with titanium. Now when we try the biotemps back on again, of course, they're not going to fit because they were relined uh, at the last appointment for the preps before the post and cores were there. So on those four teeth, um, I'm taking a burr here, and I've got an electric handpiece that I'm using, the Cavo Electro Torque, and I've turned the speed way down. I'm using a diamond just to kind of hollow out teeth number seven, eight, nine, and ten, and try to make them look like the biotemps looked in the beginning. We try the biotemps back on on the anterior segment, and now that it's seating passively, we can go ahead and re reline these. Uh, so that they fit over the preps now that the posts and cores are in place on teeth number 7, 8, 9, and 10. And if you remember what he looked like before, you can see just with the biotemps on, we have a really great result. And the patient was very happy at the end of this appointment, as he was at the end of last appointment. So about 10 days later, we have the patient back. And at this appointment, we're going to just take a look and see how everything looks. We're planning on taking the uh, master impression if we can. So again, the main point is... It's really difficult to get great restorative results, especially in the anterior, if you take your master impression on the same day that you prepare. And a lot of that has to do with the provisionals and the effect that they have on tissue levels. Really, the best way to do it from a restorative standpoint is to prepare the teeth on the first appointment, get the temporaries on, get the patient back again, as we've done here, take the temporaries off, and make sure your margins are all still where you want them to be. You know, at this time, you're able to drop any margins down if they need to go down a little bit farther. So they'll be half a millimeter subgingival. And then you know when you put the temporaries back on, there's not going to be any change because the tissue's in a stable position from the temporaries having been on the two weeks before it. Now we're going to go around all these teeth and place a double zero cord. Once the double zero cord is in place, we'll go ahead and drop down any margins that need to be dropped down to this new tissue level. When this cord is out, that will give us a margin that's about half a millimeter subgingival. We are now placing a number two E cord on top of the double zero cord around all these teeth. These cords are both from Ultradent. They are hollow cords that expand once they're in the sulcus, so it makes them a lot easier to place. Uh, probably a lot less damaging to the tissue because you don't have to use as much force, and then they do expand once they're in place. So once we get these two cords in around all these teeth, we're going to place some copper caps on top of these teeth. These copper caps are almost magical in their ability to really help tissue out. So we place them over all the teeth we're going to impress. Here you can just see we've got them on the anterior teeth at this point. And then we have the patient bite down and hold some medium pressure for 8 to 10 minutes. 
Once the 10 minutes has gone by, we're going to pull the top cord, the number two cord, as you can see my assistant doing. And I just follow right behind her with the medium body material. Because the two cord technique allows you such to get such a good subgingival impression, I use medium body material rather than light body as my syringe material. If I were to use light body material, it tears subgingivally most of the time. I don't need to use a light body material so I can drive it subgingival. I take care of that with retraction. So I can use a medium body. I get all the way down where I want to go in the sulcus and I have a higher tear strength so I get a better impression. Because we haven't prepared the second molars on the maxillary arch, we can take the bite registration like this without having a jig or the temporaries in place. So we go ahead and express it all the way around the arch except for the second molars and have the patient uh, confirm that he's in maximum intercuspation. And at the end of this appointment, you can see with the biotemps in place and a very numb uh, upper lip, we still have some nice aesthetics. By the way, once that bite registration is set, we're going to go ahead and take it out and trim it with a scalpel so that the only indentations that we have are where it's contacting uh, the incisal or the occlusal third of the prep teeth and the incisal or the occlusal third of the opposing teeth. The bite registration should not contact any soft tissue. That will cause it to be inaccurate. So about two weeks later, we get the patient back again, and we have the final uh, CapTech crowns ready to be tried in. So we try these in one at a time to check for marginal fit with an explorer, and we'll go ahead and check those. And then we can begin to check contacts as we put multiple units in place. If the units aren't staying in place, we'll go ahead and use some try and cement. Here I'm using a scaler just to make sure all the temporary cement is removed from the teeth. This I have found to be the number one preventable reason for crowns not seating when they come back. Since the patient is anesthetized most of the time, if not all the time for this appointment, if I need to, I can use a cabosonic scaler to remove any temporary cement that I can't get off with a hand scaler. This is uh, especially true if we've used Duralon as our temporary cement. So we can continue to try in the units and check the marginal fit. Because it's a PFM, we can have the patient bite together at this point all the way and check to make sure that the occlusion is very good or very close to where it needs to be. If these were all ceramic restorations, we would have to treat this a little more gently. But because they're PFMs, we don't have to. Now that we've tried in the posterior units, we're going to remove the anterior biotemps, and we will try those in. Usually I'll uh, try them in, uh, once I try them in individually and then together, if we use try and cement at that point, we'll take a digital x-ray to verify the marginal fit on the mesial and the distal, the two areas that we can't check with the Explorer. And we always want to verify and make sure we have good mesial and distal fits uh, before we cement the restorations into place. I'd much rather find out at the cementation appointment that I have a unit that doesn't fit or has a short margin than I would at a hygiene appointment when the patient's in for hygiene and my hygienist takes a bite wing and sees that we have an open margin, have to redo it then. As much as I want to get these crowns in uh, at the cementation appointment, I'd rather redo one then uh, than at a subsequent hygiene appointment. Is there's plenty of times where we put in all the units except for, say, one of them that needs to be remade because of a margin, and then that's done and the patient's done, and we know at recall everything's going to look good. As always, I'm putting in tooth number eight and nine by themselves. So these two cap tech crowns are being cemented with 3M Espy's Reliax Unisem. And then, again, the use of the orange wood sticks that you'll see me use all the time. I use these on everything from PFMs to veneers to no prep veneers. And there's just a great way for me to be able to hold things in place as my assistant comes in and does a little spot cure. The Unisem gets to a gel stage pretty easily with light curing. And you can see how we just peel this away from the tooth. That's exactly the stage we want to be at. We want to make sure we clean it off the distal and especially those gingival embrasures. Once we have that, we'll go ahead and, in this case, put uh, uh, tooth number 10 and 11 in place now that 8 and 9 are in. And again, my assistant comes in and just spot cures it with our LED curing light for about two seconds. And then we can go in and clean the excess off the buckle and the lingual. Now we move to the other side and we're putting on teeth number six and seven again with the orange wood sticks whenever I can and then my assistant comes in well with the cure the spot cure to get it to its gel stage so we then clean up the excess cement from the facial you can see here that I'm using the Explorer just to clean off some uh, adjacent teeth with the cement the unisem that's on there it cleans off 
uh, nice and easy. You just want to make sure that as you're cementing them uh, segmentally like this, since you probably won't put in the whole arch at the same time, that if there is any excess cement that runs onto the bicuspids, that you you know go over and clean that off before you try it in, because you'll notice that a unit that fit at try and then it won't fit when you go to place it in. So you just need to keep your eyes open and make sure that any excess cement that spills onto an adjacent tooth is cleaned off before you move on to cementing that unit. Now that we've got all the anterior units in place, we will go ahead and begin to place the posterior units. I'm just using a cotton roll here to clean off any loose debris, any excess temporary cement that's uh, floating around that I saw. You can use a micro brush or you know, a cotton ball, whatever's the easiest way for you to do it. Um, you want to be careful not to use a sharp instrument or anything that might cause bleeding. Although if we did have a little bleeding here, it's not quite the problem that it is when we're bonding something to place. Even though this is a resin cement, we pretty much insist on no bleeding. Uh, it, because it's a self-etching resin cement, um, the tubules don't get opened until the crown is placed. So it's not like when we do the total etch technique where any contamination can you know, certainly lead to the need for endodontic therapy on some of these teeth. So uh, a little more technique unsensitive when we're using the Unisalm, the self-etching resin cement. So. Again, uh, cementing these units into place. You can try them in again if you want to see uh, if there's a contact problem with the, uh, with the anterior teeth. But otherwise, these are ready to cement. And this cement is very easy to use, very easy to clean up. But you don't want to cure it fully. It is still a resin cement. You don't want to go in and you know, cure it for 30 seconds and then begin to clean it up. Because you'll find that interproximally, especially in the gingival embrasure, you might need a burr to get this out. This cement, because it's a resin cement, the cleanup can be a lot like uh, Panavia. But on Panavia, you're always instructed to put on the, the uh, a layer to stop the oxygen inhibited layer and then you have to wait eight minutes while the cement sets and then and then clean it up and you can get some really difficult areas to get the resin cement out from and that's one of the nice things about the Unisem is you can cure it for, you, for a few seconds and then clean it in the gel state before you do the final light curing and before it goes through its uh, final self cure. And we begin to place the last unit in now. We have the patient bite together one more time to verify that uh, Everything's still where it's supposed to be in maximum intercuspation. And anytime we can run some floss in between here and clean things up and make sure we've got it all where it needs to be. And you can see the after here with the CapTech crowns in place that um, it's certainly a huge change from what the patient had before. He was one of the male patients we saw who would actually cover his mouth with his hand when he would smile. He was very embarrassed about the look of those front teeth and uh, as a result really wouldn't smile. And you can see on the after, how he smiles much bigger than he did on the before. Notice on the before, it's kind of a half-hearted smile. On the after, it's a nice full smile. And you can see the lip line is up around the CEJ of the teeth, and he does, in fact, show the entire clinical crown instead of half-smiling and kind of trying to hide that smile, and you can imagine why he would do that. You know, on this particular GERD case, the maxillary teeth were essentially the only ones that were involved. And on the mandibular teeth, certainly on the anterior teeth, we did not see excess wear. And on the occlusal surfaces of the lower teeth, we did not see uh, a lot of erosion, a lot of chemical erosion on the occlusal surface, which can be typical for these GERD cases. So the maxillary arch was treated with the exception of the second molars. We may have to go back in and do those later. But, you know, looking at the before and the after and, and, and knowing Chris, I can just tell you he's a lot more confident with himself and with his smile now than he was before.